that's actually why I got into designing costume jewelry first. Um, you know, the vintage Chanel pieces, the YSL, the Gucci. I mean, the the craft the craftsmanship is something that you don't really see anymore. Um, you know, with the painted resin and, and everything was just very over the top and kind of out there and in your face. And you really had the freedom at that time to just layer all of it and just be as over the top as you wanted to be. Um, and so, you know, that's that's kind of why I got into um, collecting costume jewelry and then ultimately designing it. Yeah, and tell us about like how you started your first line. Um, well, I started I. I I work with a um, this amazingly talented woman, Shelly Gibbs, who designs House of Harlow jewelry with me. And she's somebody that I've known since I was 13. She is an artist. And um, in us growing up together and just being friends, she was always, you know, she always knew how to actually make the jewelry. I, I had the idea she knew how to actually make it. And we just, between my tr different traveling and her traveling, I mean, we were always just kind of finding little things that would inspire us, going to little kiosks, um, you know, just little stands when I would travel with my husband later on in life, you know, where, wherever we were in the world. I was always trying to find something that would inspire me and bring it back and make something out of that. That, that could be a fabric on a lampshade. It could be a anything. And um, so her and I had been doing that for such a long time before the business aspect really came into play in, in, a, in a real way for me um, that we were just ready to go. I mean, we, we knew. We knew we wanted to incorporate leather into our first collection and have that mixture of the leather and the gold and, and that texture mixing. And we knew that we wanted that to be a stamp in House of Harlow. And so, you know, um, the first season obviously is the most important because that's how you're really introducing yourself to the world. So it's really about being, it, it really comes down to being authentic and being 100% you. You know, I mean, that's, that's what's going to make you stand out. So, you know, it's not about what anybody else does. It's really about who you are, how you want to represent yourself to the world, and it's really about your point of view. And as long as you're authentic and 100% you, then you're definitely going to stand out. That's, that's, just, that's just a fact. But uh, along came this thing called social media, <laughs> and I had a little blog um, just talking about who knows what. I remember what the first thing was like about a bird a friend had. <laughs> the end. That was the story. <laughs> and funny enough, people were like, "That's so cool!" And what I, I don't think you even could like like it or anything. Just people were commenting, and I thought, "Oh, well, it's not just my friends and family that are looking at this. There's people that are interested in, in this industry and about what a model's life is." So I started to notice that this is great. But then all of a sudden, I had a a cover or not a cover, a newspaper article where someone had misquoted a whole interview um, oh, I, I, of me, oh. and uh, on the cover of it, it said, um, is this model too fat for the runway? And it was me in the front of the Daily News, yeah, the Daily News, and I was like, oh, great, love when you're misquoted. Uh, and everyone was talking about, you know, oh, she's, she, you know, she's too fat, she's too this, she's too that. In this article, I was so upset, but I was like, hey. Maybe this is the time to use this blog that I have now. <clears throat> At that time, my husband, who was dating me, uh, was like, we should really write something. Let's really um, tell people what it's really all about. And uh, it's funny how the industry was very like, no, 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 hush, hush. Just leave it alone, let it go away, and you know, it'll be fine. And I thought, no, this is the perfect time to actually do this. So thanks to him, I realized, let's use my voice. Let's use this blog that no one has uh, had the t chance to do something like this. And because of that, you know, more and more over time, I started to be more confident, um, excited to use my voice, and here we are. We have models that have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers, yeah. that our industry didn't realize that models were just as um, fascinating to people as a celebrity was. So I think in the direction of positive body image. Um, one of the things about Lucky is that, um, you, know, I, you know, I've been at Lucky for eight months, and I think there are a lot of magazines out there that are kind of made to make you feel bad about yourself, whether it's uh, body image, whether it's 
the sense of not belonging, whether it's a sense of like, you will never be part of this world. You can see the fancy parties we throw, but we won't invite you to hang out with them. You can tweet at us, guess what? We're not tweeting back at you because you can't sit with us. Um, and, and for me, it's like, it's a very conscious effort to just constantly expand the point of view of Lucky. We shoot a lot of bloggers in the magazine. Like half the people we've spoken today um, have been in the magazine at some point or another. Wendy Wen, like Chriselle, uh, um, you know, Ami Song, et cetera, et cetera. Coco has been in the magazine. I want people to have, to be positive in the magazine. In terms of shooting real girls and real women, um, yeah, it's something I want to do. It's, it's, it, it comes from many different angles, though. It, like, I think we need to be tasked. The, 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 most of the time, the people who are on the covers are celebrities. How many celebrities are out there who are larger than a size triple zero? <laughs> it happens with designers, too. Maybe the designer is not giving enough Beyond sample size I think as well. it's no, I think it's basically like from every single angle, like everyone's but like, but them, but them, but them. And ultimately it's like nothing's happening. There's no momentum. Um, I feel the same way about diversity in the magazine. Since I've started at Lucky, it's it's I every month I'm like, I need more African American models to shoot, I need more Asian models to shoot. There is a joke at some agencies where it's like, we've given you we're running out, and I'm like, well, there needs to be more. Like seriously. Like especially we shot an Indian American um, model and I'm like, I would like some more like Southeast Asian models. And they're like, we just don't have any. And I'm like, well go out and find some please. And, and it's hard. So um, it's something that I'm very aware of that I want to do more of. Um, but I, and I'm waiting for the industry to catch up and also I'm waiting for just like the right opportunity.